Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to the video for what is actor rotation. Let's go ahead and run through a quick little example here. It's going to have a few problems. We're going to cover the problems and how actor rotation works. So I actually have an item here, a cube that's spinning. It's actually rotating in the world. We're actually working with actor rotation, not world rotation. That is separate, but I need to show how they interact. If I'm to adjust my X, Y, or Z here, it's going to use a set rotation node. It's going to set the rotation of the actor on the X, Y, or Z, which is our pitch, roll, and yaw. But you'll notice it's still rotating at the same time. Let's cover this. These errors can be ignored. This is basically me creating an item during construction. However, a few UMG events are also firing at the same time, and they get an invalid target. It's not going to affect our example. So actor rotation. Let me pull up my generic item here. And this is the box blueprint that we're going to be using. Now my box is consisted of a default scene root, which is my actor's root, and then a static mesh, which is a child of that. Now these are important. When we are using the actor rotation nodes, there's a set and a get version. It is going to target an actor. The actor is basically the root of a blueprint actor. In this case, it's going to target my default scene root. Now remember earlier I told you I'm moving my mesh, this little cube here, on the world rotation. And I'm actually moving it separately. I'm moving this individual item here, just the cube itself. I'm rotating it while the root object of this actor is staying static. It's actually still staying at its 0, 0, 0, pitch, roll, and yaw. And that's important to note. So now that we've got that covered, we can go ahead and move on to our level itself, which I can find. There we go. So we can move on to this. So our set actor rotation, let's go ahead and pull it up. We'll pull up set actor rotation, and we're not going to be able to find it. It is context sensitive. It's going to be under the utilities transform, and it takes an actor for the target, which is why it didn't show up. There are a few other versions, as you can see here, a relative version and setting the location and rotation at the same time. We're covering just set actor rotation. Now let's look at the nodes. For the nodes itself, it takes in a target, which is going to be our actor a rotation, and a teleport physics checkbox. The rotation, because it is a rotator, can of course be right-clicked and split, and that's how I get my individual X, Y, Z, or roll, pitch, and yaw. The other checkbox is a teleport physics checkbox. We will cover that in later in the video, but for now, we can keep it unchecked. We're not using physics. Let me go ahead and go back to my box here which is my example item, and uncheck my tick rotation. We're going to go and go back in here, and we're going to hit play. Now you notice my box is just sitting there. Using the set rotation node, which is right here, I'm going to be setting the X, Y, and Z, roll, pitch, and yaw, whenever I change my little items here. Now I have this constricted between 0 and 360. Rotations are 360 degrees. 0 is your set, your base point. 360 would be one full rotation. So if we look at this item, we could, we're turning around, we have 90 for one, 180 for basically a full half circle, 270 for three quarter turn, and 360 for the full rotation. You can put in negative values. If I was to go back into my designer here, let's go on our X. Let me allow my X to be negative 360 for our example here. And that's a very large non 360 degree number. Okay, now let me go ahead and hit play. Now you notice my X can actually go turn left and turn right. Negative numbers will rotate in one direction, positives will rotate in the other. And you can go past 360. All it's going to do is loop. So 361 is basically going to be 1. 365 will basically be 5. So it's, you have 360 degrees of rotation on each axis and anything above or below negative and positive 360 is simply going to wrap around. Now let's go ahead and turn this back on and we will 
run a debug node so I can show you something important. Let's see if I can find where I hooked it up. Here we go. And let's go ahead and hit play. On the left, this really annoying spam is my tick. My tick is printing out the actor's rotation. I'm taking the box and asking it to get that rotation. And then I'm simply trying to figure out where I put it. Let's start it up again. Printing it over here on the debug. Now it's showing zero, zero, and zero. However, our box is rotating. This should be changing. Well, no, it shouldn't. Remember, I've mentioned a few times now. This rotation here that I'm getting is the actor's rotation. It is the rotation of the actor itself, which is our default scene route. My example item here is not rotating the scene route. I'm rotating the individual component static mesh in the world. So I'm just rotating the child. So if we were to look here and play, the item's rotating, no actor rotation itself, but then I could of course adjust this. Let's set it to something like 180 on the X. And now you'll see I have a roll of 180 here, technically negative 180, it's, it's all relative. As you can see here, based on how I'm rotating it. And of course, rotation works together additively, and there we go. So while I have individual rotations here for the actor, the item itself is still rotating on its world axis, and they are completely separate. So that has been repeated a few times, but it's important to note, when you're working with things, if you're rotating different components, different parts, relative to the world, relative to the parent, or the actor itself, they all work together, so you have to pay attention to that. So the actor rotation nodes for setting and getting apply to the base root of the actor and they allow you to set the rotation. Now in terms of these inputs and outputs, the last ones, the output return value is whether the rotation was successfully set, whether it was stopped or not. For the most part, this is going to be true at all points in time. I've never run into a false part but you can always check to make sure a rotation is set before you actually do any other further logic. Teleport physics. Basically, when you're rotating something, if physics is attached to it and teleport physics is not checked, it's going to calculate any physics as you rotate it. Let's say our object here is spinning. If I have something attached to it, say a string or another item that's physics enabled, it may be rotating around with it. It's going to use physics to determine what it hits and how it spins. However, I'm only doing that slowly. I'm doing it one rotational unit per tick. If I had a very large amount of rotation, let's say I had to rotate 180 degrees suddenly, and I didn't have teleport physics on, you may see a huge amount of movement on that physics item, which may be what we want, but you may see a huge amount of movement because it's calculating the full 180 degrees turn within that one frame. If you have teleport physics turned on, any physics calculations are basically stopped during that rotation and things will be in the same physics state when it's done rotating. So if you have large rotations, you may want to have teleport physics turned on. Basically, if you're teleporting something, you're making a large change instead of a steady change over time or using a physics movement you may want to have teleport physics turned on. That is going to wrap up our actor rotation nodes. Remember, again, very important. It is applied to the actor itself, not an individual component. It's basically the root of your actor blueprint.